When I made the decision to go with this old girl, there was a couple of things I wanted to do, and that was install new runners in the skis and studs in the track. But because this show is all about keeping the cost of snowmobiling reasonable, I also had to stay within my budget. So far, the money I spent, which includes buying the machine itself, plus things like permits and insurance, and the addition of studs and runners, I've spent about 3,300 bucks. A little bit over my original budget, but not too bad. Now before I made the final decision on the studs, I made doubly sure that nothing else major was wrong with the machine by giving it a close inspection here in the shop once I got it home. For me, studs are all about the safety factor, even more than the performance factor. Because on the trail, you never know when there might be an icy section or a corner ahead. And without studs and runners, it doesn't matter what your skill level is as a rider, you're probably going to end up in the rhubarb. That's why I felt it was important, even on a tight budget, to leave enough dough in the can that I could afford to put studs and runners on the XCR. I decided to go with a 96 stud pattern and laid that out on the track before I drilled any holes just to make sure everything works out. Now a good rule of thumb is one stud per horsepower. And with around 110 ponies of the 600 here, 96 seemed good enough for me. Plus, 96 is cheaper than going with 120 or 144 pattern. Now I could have gone with less studs, say like a 48 pattern or something like that, which would have still offered a significant improvement in traction and control, but with so few picks in the track, it would really have a tendency to spin hard on acceleration, which is tough on the tips of the carbide studs. The installation of the studs themselves is pretty straightforward, and if you can drill a hole and thread a nut and a bolt together, you too can do this job. Just be prepared to spend an hour or two doing it, and really work those thumb muscles. I'm installing Woody's Traction Master studs, which are 920 thou in length. On this machine, the track lug height is 820 thou, which means I have 100 thou, or almost one eighth of an inch of penetration of stud above the top of the lug. Now you can run a taller stud if you want to, but as this length increases, so does the chance of failure because of the extra strain and stress on the track and the studs themselves. Companies like Woody's have excellent resources on their website in the form of application guides so you can figure out what's best for your machine. And my advice to you is, stick to what the pros are telling you. Oh, and the other thing, uh, the prickly side, it sticks out. With the increase of traction we've added to the rear of the machine, it's also a good idea to increase traction to the front of the machine as well, in the form of more aggressive carbides. Again, there's a balance to be found here. I like a very aggressive front end, so for this application, I'm going with the Woody's Dually Series runners with two 6-inch carbide inserts on each one of the runners. Now you have to remember, the more carbide you have on the snow, the more effort it's going to take to steer the machine. I'm okay with the upper body strength that I have, but you might have to find a little bit of a balance. If you're not sure, stick with the advice of the pros at resources like the Woody's website. Now for me, with that last bolt being tightened, I'm ready to take this old girl back out on the trails. <laughs>